Hey guys, what's going on? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. Much appreciated. If you guys could subscribe here, also subscribe to the WQAM YouTube page and watch me and Leroy every single weekday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. All kinds of silly sauce and shenanigans. If you tuned in a little bit early on this afternoon, you got some Heat Summer League action as, you know, it's Heat Celtics. What do you think happened? The Heat kicked the snot out of the Celtics, 99-88. And what actually was a really good back and forth affair between the two franchises, you saw everybody there that descend upon you. It's Spo there, Bam Adebayo was courtside, Duncan Robinson. Uh, you had on the other side of it Tatum and Brad Stevens, both in Las Vegas. And uh, this was a, a a great showing by Miami, much better than the last game they had in Sacramento to start off. And the star of this game, flat out and simply, was. Orlando Robinson. Orlando Robinson was an absolute menace today. 36 points, 11 rebounds, uh, was doing it all. I mean, he was bullying inside. He was three or four from downtown, really had it all going. And I think for Orlando, big time showcases, I thought his last game, he was not very impressive. Um, this game, I, I got to give a little bit of credit to Nikola Jovic. I thought that he really settled Orlando in trying to get him some easy looks uh, was was looking for him on a few occasions to to get him some easy buckets and this second half it and he took off. I mean he took it off and and basically closed the show. But in the even in the first half, I mean I think he had twenty one points at the break on this thing. So just an absolute monster game from Lando in this one, and to see that confidence that was going. I mean he was doing it in every which way. I mentioned him pulling up from three, but was going inside. He was getting putbacks. Uh, he was attacking at certain points. He was bringing the ball off the floor. Like he about the most confident you could see Orlando Robinson look in a heat Jersey. And that has to make the, the crew absolutely happy for bringing him back on a standard contract. You know, you thought that they had to get better with their backup bigs this year. Uh, mentioned in that Thomas Bryant was courtside today. He introduced himself to Eric Spolstra. You saw a meeting between Thomas Bryant and Bam out bio. And certainly Thomas brings that veteran presence, but when it comes to you know the young guns and finding somebody there, they needed to get better. Uh, Omer Yurtsevin, clearly the coach didn't trust him, didn't cr trust what he could bring to the table. And I think that if you saw the times this year where Orlando did play when he was on a two-way contract, they really liked him. I mean, they really liked what he brought to the table. Um, there, was just a, there was just an easiness to his game, the way that he fit in, the energy that he plays with. I think that they found uh, just a little bit more natural. So for him to go out here like this, it was big for a couple of reasons. One, they give him that big time. Uh, they give him that big time opportunity, the standard contract. But two, the unfortunate part of this game was Nikola Jovic, who had a good first half, but was uh, was struggling. It looked like he was struggling a little bit in the second half. And maybe we know why, because you could notice very it was very noticeable that he was laboring up and down the court. I was like, man, is, is Jovic like tired? Is he out of uh, is he out of energy? It's a little bit odd. He looks like he's in great shape. He's obviously twenty years old, um, and the broadcast was making a point of it. And then you noticed as soon as he came out, you could see on TV from the bench he veered off and he went right to the locker room. And they uh, said afterwards that he's got a sore foot. So. No bueno on that. The fact that uh, Jovic is hurt because I think a lot of us are, are tuning in to see what he can do. He still, I mean, I, I will say this for Jovic, um, you know, with his 28 minutes tonight, 14 points, six rebounds, three assists, two steals, one block. So did a little bit of everything there. But the thing that is, I, I think, uh, really standing out about uh, Nicola so far this summer league, this dude is getting to the line like an absolute demon. Eight and nine from the free throw line tonight, um, this afternoon rather, crazy. I mean he he is getting he is getting uh, people hacking him all over the place. And yes, I do understand it is summer league, so I guess you can take a little grain of salt. People are being very. You get ten fouls. People are going to be a little bit more aggressive. They're not going to uh, they're not going to uh, let the cheap baskets by. They want to show like they're defending hard. Either way. He's still getting to the free throw line at an incredible clip. I feel like every time I think he's made it, I think at least six trips the in the in the first three games of the summer league. So though the uh, the shooting wasn't the prettiest today from him, definitely was trying to set up Orlando Robinson. I thought that was a big key for him. He got a couple of big assists to him, and even probably could have had more. But Orlando uh, took it took it took him a minute to really get going in this game. Um, 
But one of the other things that you love about Jovic and Woody Bronson, you know, getting that rebound and really just starting down the floor, getting downhill. I think that was another thing that was just you really, really like to see from from Jovic. Drew Smith, um, I have to say this was easily his best game of the summer. I mean, that wasn't even close. And he had uh, a couple of big just oozing heat culture plays where he takes the monster charge. But he was he was very confident. I think the most decisive they needed him today because Jamari Bouye was out of this game. This was really his show. You know, he's got one of those two way contracts. Um, they're looking for ball handlers. They're looking for somebody who's you know going to step up into you know not necessarily the Gabe Vincent shoes, but start the Gabe Vincent development. They've really liked Drew Smith. He's been around the organization for a little bit now, and that was uh, that was really solid to see from him today. He was. He uh, he he had a, a good control of things as that game was waning down. Um, so a, a really really nice performance from him. Jamal Kane, you know, goes out there today, and uh, and he was was pretty solid for all around. I think the one guy who who probably had his biggest turnaround, and especially noticeable in the first half, was Drew Peterson. Uh, Drew ended up hitting the uh, it was Drew to Drew to kind of ice things with a big dagger. But Drew Peterson, who is one of these shooters that they brought in undrafted he got the uh the interview with chris haynes after the first quarter because he got off to a really hot start but uh the interesting thing from him is he he got the old talk that he was being too passive and the heat coaching staff does not like that do not come to you know their summer league teams if they if if you are here for shooting do not pass up shots and so you saw a guy today out there who you know took his opportunities and was starting to make some shots and do some things for for miami but yeah, this by far today was the Orlando Robinson show. He, I think, really probably pleased a lot of people with uh, the rewarding of confidence and what they're able to do. So uh, that was your performance today. And then uh, as far as the the offseason's concerned right now with the moves, you did see a shot there. Uh, NBA TV shows, Eric Spolstra, Andy Ellisberg sitting there courtside. You know, what moves could be happening there? You have... Uh, I guess what you would say are the two franchises that are most vying for Damian Lillard in that you have the franchise that Damian Lillard actually wants to go to and the franchise that it feels like all the fans want him to go to in the Boston Celtics. Uh, why people want the Boston Celtics to get Damian Lillard is beyond me, but who, you know, especially with the idea that they're not going to trade uh, Jalen Brown. So it's like the, the Blazers are going to get some haul on the way back from from Boston. That's neither here nor there. The uh, the interesting thing from that, though, uh, Chris Haynes did say he did a little uh, stand-up to talk about Damian Lillard, and th- there was some interesting stuff that came out of that where he said that th- I would say the most interesting thing is that the Heat and the Blazers haven't really had substantial talks yet. I like, haven't had any meaningful trade discussions about Damian Lillard. You know, we all know Damian Lillard wants to go to the Heat, I think we all know that the Heat are interested in Damian Lillard. I think we all know that uh, we've heard rumors that they've been trying to maybe shop Tyler Hero and seeing what they can get for him for an asset for the Blazers. But I guess as far as them actually sitting down and discussing, hey, what do you want? What do you want? Um, I According to Haynes, they haven't done that yet. And then uh, Aaron Goodwin, who has done just a, a – a, really great job this week and and making it known what his client wants I mean, we've had the reports that Dame won't show up to training camp Damien only wants to go to Miami and it's making the media mental I mean they're out here and they're like oh I can't believe the reputation hit Damian Lillard has taken I'm just like to who blow hard uh, hoops uh you know here with his his chubby cheeks in the avatar it's hurt his reputation like who who is he who who, who the hell is he hurting here I'd love to know you know uh, you know, dunker spot blog on Twitter, like you know, you know, a bowl bleep peach basket central, like central, like wh- who whose reputation is he hurting, right? Um, I think even Kevin Durant gave voice to this, where he's just like, people want to see you know Damian Lillard hoop, but the fans are gonna look forward to watching Scoot Henderson play in Portland, and uh, you know, to say this is any kind of stain on Damian Lillard is you know, it's atrocious, dude. It's it's atrocious that. One of the class guys in the league is uh, is getting treated like this with, uh, <laughs> you know, not surprising, though. I mean, remember how everybody freaked out on LeBron. 13-year anniversary of the decision, by the way, today. So, yeah, Haynes, his big report was that there haven't been any substantial talks yet. And uh, 
hopes to uh, the agent hopes that they do hash it out at some point in Vegas. They all just got there. It was a Goosey's photo today of uh, uh, Alonzo Morning put out where you see Bam and Zoe and the coaching staff and uh, Duncan Robinson. And so that was kind of cool. You see that the, the whole contingent is basically there. I imagine maybe UFC uh, UD is going to be at UFC tonight because uh, he's got a friendship with Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler has his retirement fight tonight. And uh, Robbie, it, it was funny. I got to talk to Robbie this week. Who's I mean, just a a legend, dude. I mean, if you guys don't know Robbie Lawler, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. But uh, Robbie and and UD have a little bit of a rapport uh, with you know they've done some strength and conditioning training together and things like that. But uh, UD then even put a little shout out to him on on social media as well, which I thought was really cool. But I asked Robbie about Udonis Haslam this week, and this is what he said. Yeah, it's crazy. I have a we have a mutual friend. Udonis is the man. Uh, met him many times. Uh, hung out with him in Sioux Falls here and there. And uh, yeah, he's a worker, and and that's how you have careers like this. You you just work and keep working and grinding and and trying to perfect your craft and adapting. And obviously, he was one of those guys, a grinder, and it takes mental toughness to do that for as long as we've done it. It's just uh, who we are. One of the most badass fighters of all time. One of the most badass basketball players of all time. It's uh, just going about their business grinders. You know, just like no no wonder there seems to be a, a mutual respect and a love there between both of them. So really cool. Great performance today by uh, the Heat Summer League team, especially Orlando Robinson. Uh, you hope health-wise Nikola Jovic is, uh, is going to be okay. Also should mention Jaime Jaquez did not play in this game. He was out. With uh with an injury, remember he got banged up in that last game, which I didn't mention in the last video. I probably should. I totally forgot that he kind of got crunched there, and maybe that had something to do with some of his struggles and why he didn't play too much in that game. But now it seems fairly obvious that he was uh, affected by something. So hopefully we'll see uh, Triple J out there again in the near future and get to see what he's able to do because we're all excited about that. But uh, look, in the absence, Orlando Robinson stepped up in a monster, monster way today. Great game by him.